Salamence is a dragon of many skills. While it's almost always ran physically, it can function nice as a special attacker with that base 110, but here's a dumb idea. I'm gonna try to use Roar to force a switch and mix up the matchup, and since it's a sound based move, this can activate the throat spray item giving us a nice little plus one boost to special attack. Boost it up, we can hit some stuff with Dragon Pulse and Air Slash for stab damage, and even some surprise coverage with Hydro Pump. It's mostly just nonsense, but we're gonna try to be the first Roar Throat Spray Mence in the game. Look, sometimes you just gotta use Pokemon in weird ways, and that's what we're all about over here. If you're into that kind of thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Glamora. This little uh, blue flower bastard is always so annoying. I really would enjoy not having toxic spikes on my side. As I have a Carbink, I'm basically just here to kind of set up some Stealth Rock, and it's always an interesting matchup, just because we're gonna trade Stealth Rock, but essentially this thing can then Mortal Spin mine away, and I would like to keep those up. So, the problem is that I both don't enjoy like an Earth Power or a like a Sludge Wave, and also this thing can spin those away with a Mortal Spin. So, I have a plan. I'm gonna end up actually switching into Excadrill. Main reason is because I have an Air Balloon, so I'm obviously not affected by an Earth Power, and then if they do decide to try to spin away my Stealth Rock, they actually cannot do that because I can spin block it being a Steel type. So that is the plan. I bring in Holy Moly, and then I can actually rapid spin uh, their rocks away uh, my own. So this is actually a great matchup for the Mole. We come in, and they do actually end up going for a Mortal Spin, which is perfect. So that's one way to basically ensure that my Stealth Rocks stay up at least for now. And at this point, I'm gonna go for a rapid spin of my own. We're both, we both have the same idea. Set up Stealth Rock and then do some spinning. So, as I am going to rapid spin, they just decide to go into Rillaboom, which uh, is a good switch in here. It sets up the Grassy Surge, which, important to note, it does reduce damage uh, of Earthquake. And also, if they touch me, I'm gonna lose my Air Balloon and just not have that fun of a birthday party. So, I do at least get a little bit of chip with the rapid spin, along with getting rid of the Stealth Rock. And at this point, I realize uh, I can't really stay in here. So I'm actually going to bring in the boy himself. I'm going to switch into the Salamence because I not only just have a good defensive switch in here, but I can just go for a nice little Intimidate and try to get this uh, this fat boy going. So Intimidate's going to help out a whole lot as they are just going to Grassy Glide and glide themselves into the thickest dragon boy built like a bowl of oatmeal. And we are taking no damage. So, I know they're probably going to switch. And that means that I can just go for a nice little roar and just stir some stuff up. And be like, hey, you know you how you thought you had some power and what you were going to bring in here? Turns out you don't. Because as they go into the Grim Snarl, takes a little bit of Stealth Rock. And then I'm like, yep, see ya. I'm going to go ahead and yell at ya. And that's what this Salamence does best. Just make people afraid. And they don't like the confrontation. So they are forced to switch into something random. Which then brings in the Urshifu. So, this thing is obviously going to touch the Stealth Rock, but also that's going to activate the Throat Spray because all that roaring is tough on the throat. So now we're at plus one special attack, and we are also naturally faster than Urshifu. So I'm like, you know what? At full health, I actually think at plus one an Air Slash should kill here. I can fire off the Air Slash, and boom, that just straight up takes care of freaking Kung Fu Panda over there. So that is incredibly satisfying, and uh, good to see that thing gone because it's basically like the biggest threat, you know, out of the way. So... Now they decide to go into the Glamora once again, and it's time to bust out the Hydro Pump. I'm able to outspeed, I connect on a Hydro Pump, and yeah, that is a super effective hit. Definitely gonna be able uh, to take care of it, and uh, freaking... Salamence has the ability to Hydro Pump, which is crazy, and it's always just a fun time whenever I can get that to, you know, to work. So, that thing goes down, and now they decide to bring back in the Fairy. Now, the uh, Grim Snarl is a bit annoying here. I realize, I'm thinking they probably go for a screen, so I'm relatively safe. Turns out they're actually just gonna fake out, which you know doesn't really matter, doesn't really hurt all that bad, but kinda tells me a little bit about what this thing's gonna be working with. I'm just gonna end up going for a light screen anyway, or a uh, freaking air slash anyway, as they do light screen. So, of course it is probably gonna be light clay with those screens, and air slash does around half, which is nice. And so here's the situation. I'm expecting them to either go for a Reflect or go for a Parting Shot. And if they Parting Shot, I decide to click the Roar, which means I can just stir some stuff up stuff up even further. But actually, they just go for that Fairy Coverage, and it you know does take care of the Salamence. But not before we were at least able to Roar and <laughs> activate a Throat Spray and kill two, two things with it. So I'm like, hey, that's a 
that's a dub on Salamence in, in my book. But there is still lots of game to be played, and we got to see if we can uh, clean it up here. So, on the free switch, or at least revenge switch, I decided to bring in the Greninja. Now, looking at this thing behind the light screen, I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to have enough damage with the Sludge Wave. So, I decided to go for the Terra Poison. And if I'm still not able to grab a kill, at least that means that then... Uh, the Spirit Break, you know, won't do as much as it normally would on my ordinary Dark-type bass. And now we are poisoned. I go for that Sludge Wave, and we're just throwing waves around. That's what this Greninja does. Surfing and then throwing Sludge Waves. That is going to be able to take care of the Grim Snarl with a crit. I don't think it mattered with the, uh, the boost from the Terra Poison. And not only are we able to grab a kill, but also, you know, the deal with the Greninja. We get a nice little, uh, little Battle Bond action, boost the Special Attack, and the Speed. And uh, this thing is extremely scary as soon as that gets set up because there's really not a whole lot that wants to deal with this thing. So one of the things they do have that can deal with it is in fact going to be Metagross. So the thing is, I obviously a bullet punch is going to hurt a little bit, but a super effective Dark Pulse at plus one should grab a kill here, except they do in fact still have the Terra in the back pocket. So they're going to go ahead and go all Crystallize action on it. It's going to go full steel which is not only going to boost a potential priority bullet punch, but also now I don't have the super effective hit with the Dark Pulse, but then I realize also freaking Light Screen's still up, and so it was a bad time overall. And um, yeah, I don't get the flinch, which then allows him to go for the Zen Headbutt with an axe on its head. A Zen Headbutt he is going to hurt. So the Poison ends up coming, or the Poison Terror comes to you know, bite me in the ass a little bit, but as Greninja goes down, I can now figure out what I want to bring in here. Now... I do have a couple options for Metagross. I have both the um, Magmortar along with this fellow. I have the Excadrill who threatens you with an Earthquake. As they do this, there's basically there's one or two things can happen. Either they stay in and expect me to overpredict, thinking they go into the Rillaboom, or they just go into the Rillaboom and it's bad news for me. So I'm just going to make the obvious play and go for the Earthquake, kind of feel out uh, what they want to do here. I feel like it's a good middle ground play for me because as they do go Rillaboom, which is unfortunate for my Earthquake, I know that I just have a direct switch into that with the Mag Mortar. So this thing comes in, sets up Grassy Surge, which is annoying because Earthquake is also just not very effective, but now just dampened by that Grassy Surge. It doesn't do anything, but he just straight up heals up basically all the damage that he lost. As the light screen does wear away, I'm like, okay, this is a pretty good time to just bring in the, the Mag Mortar here. I also have the option for Flame Body to burn him, and that would be actually great because if the monkey wants to touch me, you're gonna, it's gonna, we sizzling out here. So, uh, I bring in Magmortar, and they do just go for the Grassy Glide, which is great, because it does hurt me quite a bit, but Flame Body actually activates. And I swear to God, it was like just the other day, I was talking shit about how Flame Body never activates, but now it's actually been coming in clutch. And uh, so, <laughs> that's gonna be really nice and reducing damage from this fella. I think that's actually, is that Choice Band damage on the guy? So the burn is actually super helpful there. And now... I'm going to go ahead and make a little prediction. We're playing safe earlier, and so now I decided to go ahead for a risky play. I'm thinking if I'm them, I actually switch in Skeledurge to the Magmortar, who obviously a flamethrower is probably incoming. So expecting Skeledurge to come in, I'm actually going to go ahead and double switch into the Grimmsnarl here. And it does actually end up happening. In comes freaking Skeledurge, which is solid for me uh, because I know that I can take attacks from this thing, and this is not your ordinary Grimmsnarl, and I'm going to be able to... At least hit it with a nice little Dark Pulse and potentially get some Nasty Plot shenanigans going. So, I actually decide it's probably in my best interest uh, just to go ahead and bust out a Dark Pulse. That's because I know that they're going to go for a Torch Summon. And it's going to hurt a little bit, but uh, not around half. And I know that I'm probably not going to have the longevity to Nasty Plot. So, as it actually gets the special attack boost from that Torch Song, I'm going to go ahead and copy that with my ear Mirror Herb, which is always fantastic. And then, just go ahead and fire off a nice little Pulse at him which is actually going to kill with a crit. It's important to note, I think the crit mattered because that thing was more than likely going to be unaware. So that special attack boost does not come into play, but the Dark Pulse is extremely clutch. Takes care of the Gator, which is great because I really only had Excadrill as an answer to that. And if it starts to stack up, it's pretty freaking scary. So problem is Metagross is, Metagross is the problem. This thing with a bullet punch here is going to be able to finish off the Grim Smile. I felt like it wasn't really... Uh, worth the risk of me switching here. I obviously can't go into Magmortar and take two bullet punches, probably, with the, the Terra Steel. So I'm like, I'm just going to let the Grim go down. And uh, while Metagross is still bad, I am kind of in a unique situation here. While I do have Excadrill, who's a great answer to this thing, they just still have that freaking Rillaboom, who uh, just freely switches into me basically all day. So 
Uh, Metagross cannot touch me here. I decide to go for the Iron Head. I'm thinking they probably go Rillaboom this time, and they, they do not. They actually stay in. But luckily for me, I actually get to flinch with the Iron Head. So the Hacks has been on my side out here. And at this point, they know that I've Iron Headed. I'm just going to Earthquake as they actually stay in, thankfully for us. And that's going to finish off the Metagross, which is basically the largest threat at this point. And now we're looking like the game is a whole lot more free. So... Having the Magmortar in the back was just a good insurance policy for their play switching into Rillaboom and it opened the game up a whole lot for me. So now their final Mon is going to be the Rillaboom. He comes in, Grassy surges it one more time. He's like, this place is not green enough. And so he has to just go ahead and spill some grass all over the place. I'm just going to Iron Head just to get as much damage as possible. And I actually get another flinch, which is honestly just mean at this point. And that uh, <laughs> is kind of crazy. They, like, they didn't click Grassy Glide because they're probably... Uh, choiced and then they were not able to do much to Magmortar with that knowing it's not uh, gonna be able to pick me off So one more iron head is gonna kill the real boom, which is great for me And that's gonna go ahead and clean up the match So I thought that was just an interesting one and just kind of a fun showcase of the squad I'm working with and uh, Yeah with that we're gonna go ahead and jump into the next game because you already know we got another one now Of course, this is my time to ask if you've made it this far into the video Go ahead and hit that like button for me. It's free, you know, it's free and only takes you a second to just click the button and it really, you know, does help out. So let's go ahead and get into it. So one thing about this Salamence set is for, for one, it basically, it's not going to like fully sweep a squad and I'm kind of aware of that, but trying to get it to do anything with a Roar Throat Spray is just kind of like hilarious in my eyes and basically just going to see if we can possibly do it. So my opponent's actually going to lead off with a Decidueye, which means they probably expect the Carbink lead. And that equals bad, because that allows them to then go for a nice little free sword stance, and now the Sidui sharp, and I am a rock that is kind of in danger here. So, as I do set up my stealth rock, I know at least that I am sturdy, so I can go ahead and guarantee I live in attack, which Leaf Blade does go ahead and slice and dice me up, and Car Car Binks is like, holy shit, that hurt. But uh, at least... One way I can kind of dampen what this Decidueye is able to do is just set up a nice little reflect here. So that's going to make me better on the physical side for at least the eight turns. And as they do finish me off with one more Leaf Blade, and down goes the Carbon. So I basically, I set up my Stealth Rock. I say, see ya after reflect. And now I got to figure out what to do. So the obvious answer is actually to bring in the Salamence because I can actually, I can intimidate it down to plus one attack. And behind the reflect, I know that I'm pretty nice to be able to take attacks from this thing. So... I'm actually going to end up going for the Roar here, which works out fantastically because they're going to go ahead and set up another Sword Stance, which the last thing they were expecting was probably to see me go for the Roar, so I actually am able to phase that thing out of there. Gets rid of those stat boosts, which is one side effect of going for Roar that uh, is amazing, and it actually is going to go ahead and draw in the Star Raptor, which does take some Stealth Rock chip, and I'm like, alright, so that Decidueye is a whole lot less of a problem. Not only that, but we also get that Throat Spray from the Roar, and uh, Salamence is basically now going to try to do as, as much as we can. So, I'm just going to go for the Dragon Pulse. I know that this thing is going to be faster, uh, but luckily we are pretty thick. And a Double Edge, while it does hurt, I'm able to take it you know, pretty nicely and then finish it off with a Dragon Pulse. So, that is actually amazing taking care of Star Raptor. That thing as a fast Scarfer is very scary and just hits, you know, super hard. And uh, on the Revenge Switch, they're going to go into this thing. So, listen to me very closely. Snorlax is a damn problem and I realize even a plus one special attack I am not going to be able to do too much to this thing at least not enough valuable damage so I decide I'm gonna go into Grim Snarl and see if I can't get something going with this guy that's because I actually expected them to go for a curse you know they know my reflex up so they're not gonna be able to hurt that bad um, but I was mainly just worried about this thing just straight up going for curses and just getting out of hand so the plan on going into Grim Snarl was that I have a mirror herb so I would at least be able to match it's a defense boost, but as they body slammed instead, I get paralyzed and I'm like, well, I might as well just start nasty plotting because if I can, you know, maybe you know, boost my special attack enough, I can kind of try to do something against freaking Snorlax. And it is going to end up going for the curse here, which then activates the mirror herb, which, you know, isn't horrible because I kind of just, you know, steal their, the only valuable stat boost is just the defense boost there, but at least it's going to make me able to take attacks and its best option is going to be with like a uh, body slam probably depending on what the thing's working with now i'm going to go for the burning jealousy i was really hoping that this thing was going to be faster and go for a curse again and then i would be able to burn it with that burning jealousy but yeah it's, it's Snorlax is slow as hell it has a curse up and yeah i mean even being paralyzed i'm still faster so 
Burning Jealousy not only doesn't do anything, but also it's doing a lot with <laughs> its freaking uh, body slam. So at least I am able to get off a Dark Pulse, which is going to do a nice little chunk to the guy. And it actually is going to... Sorry, it was Heavy Slam, which I can live one more of. And at this point, we're kind of in Code, code Red situation versus this damn Snorlax. I really just need to get off at least another Dark Pulse here to get as much chip as possible. To make this thing manageable and it turns out yeah, they have different ideas i actually am gonna go ahead and get fully paralyzed which is worst case scenario because now after some more leftovers and stuff this snorlax is a freaking very large and chubby problem and uh it's very healthy it has a it has a curse up it's very bulky on the special side and looking at what i have left i really <laughs> i really don't have a lot of options so I decided to bring in the Excadrill here because I'm thinking, you know, I probably can live an attack unless it has, uh, it can't Earthquake me. So I'm thinking, I'm hoping its last coverage option is Earthquake. Uh, so I'm going to go for an Earthquake of my own, which is going to do a nice little chunk, but then it has Heat Crash, which, uh, yeah, that's a big flaming ball of blubber and that's going to take care of Excadrill. So <laughs> Heat Crash there was unfortunate. I was at least hoping that it had to Body Slam me or Heavy Slam me at least once. Uh, to pop my balloon or something, but uh, yeah, Heat Crash is going to take me out, and now I'm like, holy shit, I got to find a way around this Snorlax, and guess what? There's not an easy way around it. So, here's the thing. At least I have some good chip on this thing, and I know that it's not going to be rest. So all I got to do is just slowly whittle it down, and then hopefully try to pull something out of my ass with what I have left. So, I decided to go into Magmortar here, and I cannot go for a Flamethrower because it's most likely going to be Thick Fat. Uh, so my best damage is actually with a solar beam. I'm able to get it off immediately and it does literally nothing. Snorlax is so incredibly annoying, this thing just never dies. And while at least I am able to live a body slam, it does not get the flame body, which would have been super awesome for me. But at this point, the good news is I can go for a flame or a, a, a thunderbolt, be able to knock it out, and then I can revenge kill it with something I have in the back, which is not that many options left. But what I do have is Greninja, and uh, Greninja in the back is always a just massive threat, because if I can get my Battle Bond, I can pull this game around. So that is basically the plan. So I'm going to go Greninja here, because essentially I need to be able to get a kill to activate Battle Bond, and then I look on really honestly pretty good against whatever they have left. So I'm going to end up going for the Surf here, which thank God should be able to knock the damn guy out and the Snorlax is not able to swim. So that takes care of the Lax. Now here is the situation. I'm able to then get that attack, or at least mostly the special attack boost, along with a speed boost, and I have a life orb, and Greninja is faster than everything they have left and hits just very hard on literally everything. So um, as they're gonna actually end up bringing in Hydrapple, we have a, kind, of a, kind of a weird matchup here where ordinarily, I, you know, can Ice Beam the thing and just straight up kill it because it's four times weak, but I know that they have the Terra in their back pocket still, so expecting them to go for a Terra Steel, at least that's what I'm expecting, either Terra Steel or Terra Fairy, I'm going to bust out a Terra of my own and go into Poison type. Now that's just because if it wants to go for an Energy Ball or just any type of Grass Stab, I know that I can live it, and also I don't want to click um, like Ice Beam or Sludge Wave because of the fact that it's probably going to defensively Terra into like steel now it turns out they're actually going to go in for the uh terra dragon which is like damn it i should have just clicked the ice beam anyway but uh the terra dragon is going to be fine i go for that dark pulse it's going to hit it with like a nice little neutral also runs the uh, the chance of like a flinch it unfortunately does not flinch but it is able to then fire off a leaf storm which i can live thanks to my freaking skull on my head so you know being poison type clutched me out there and as i go for an ice beam it actually it has sucker punch the Sucker Punch Hydrapple comes in extremely clutch. Not gonna, I didn't even know that this thing got access to Sucker Punch. Um, that is very bad. <laughs> Just because, had it not had Sucker Punch there, I'm able to knock it out. And then, honestly, I feel very confident that uh, Greninja does well uh, against literally everything they have left. So, at least at this point, I can go into the Salamence here. And I can outspeed, pop him with a nice little Dragon Pulse. And that is still super effective with the chip we've got. That's going to take care of the Hydrapple, which is solid. So, at this point, they have three Mons left. And I have a special Salamence and a Dream. One of them I know is going to be Seraledge, who potentially I could bop it with a Hydro Pump, which would be very satisfying. So, first of all, they actually end up going into Decidueye once again. This thing is still around full. I do luckily at least have the Air Slash, so I'm like, holy hell, this actually might kill. It lives it with like 15 HP, unfortunately. 
And then, actually also even activates a, uh, a freaking Salic Berry. So it gets a speed boost now, and they're actually gonna Swords Dance. So I'm like, oh. Shit, that's that's not ideal. I really wish I, a flinch with the air slash there actually would have put me in a position to maybe bring this game back with the Salamence, but they do also just have the Sucker Punch with the priority. That is going to finish off the Salamence, and that is going to be the end of the game. So that Snorlax truly really got the best of me there, but it still ended up being a close match. It was a fun one, and Roar Salamence did a little bit of stuff, and that's what we're all about. So thank you guys very much for watching. For real, the support is amazing. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.